Everybody live? This is the case that we're working since yesterday, where yesterday morning around 2.20 a.m., the child's caregiver, the mother's boyfriend, reported that his car was stolen with this 21-month-old white male, blonde-haired, blue-eyed child in the backseat of the car. Uh, released this morning that the suspect in this case, Mr. William Ebron, he's a 32-year-old black male, he was arrested overnight and charged with two counts of felony child neglect as it related to another child, not uh, our missing child in this case. Uh, we're working this case now still as an abduction, but we believe that Mr. Ebron is the suspect in our abduction. We now have evidence and information to lead us to, to the fact that the story that he gave about his vehicle being stolen with the victim in the back seat was not true. Uh, we're not working this as a stranger abduction anymore, still listing it as an Amber Alert and still working as a uh, child abduction with a missing person. We worked through the day again with detectives. We've got approximately 150 detectives, uh, patrol officers, and other resources from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and the JFRD, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Alachua County Sheriff's Office, and the local FBI office, field office, have representatives out here to help us with various aspects of our search. Uh, I alluded this morning that we had some business to finish in the Briarwood neighborhood. We divided and conquered. We took some assets from patrol and detectives and finished with some uh, canvases and, and not door to door uh, knock and talks, looking for information on this child up in the Briarwood area. But as the day quickly progressed, we had some information come in and some evidence that led us to the area of Phillips Highway and 295 on the south end, south of the Avenues Mall. Uh, we began to search some wooded areas out there, some bodies of water. There's a mobile home park that's in that area that we began to search inside the mobile home park and around. Our efforts tomorrow will continue in the south, uh, Phillips Highway and 295 area. Again, the information has led us down there. This is an information-driven investigation and it will continue to be as, as we continue through this. When new pieces of information come up that can lead us to the potential whereabouts of the victim in this case, we'll move towards that. This is still some hope that we may find uh, Lonzi alive. As time progresses, that hope fades. Uh, our determination, however, does not fade when it comes to making the steps necessary to recover him in whatever shape that we can. Uh, the mother in this case remains uh, helpful to police. Uh, she is not involved that we have any information or leads to. Uh, some of the information came in uh, and you, you kind of look where people have asked some questions, you know, is, is the mother cooperative? Why hasn't the mother gotten out there? Uh, she is working with us now and believes that the primary focus of this investigation should be police driven and we're stepping out. She is thankful for the public support as well as the news media support to keep this case out there in the public. So we continue to work with her and the child's father. He too is, is helpful and not in any way, shape or form connected to this case that we believe now. We've worked 50 some odd tips in this case. We ask for more tips to continue to come through. Folks can remain anonymous. Uh, we know that Mr. Uh, Mr. Ebron had some contact with people throughout the evening. We'd like to have those people come forward. Our investigations still lead us to those folks and we've made contact with them. But just in case there's some other contact that he made that wasn't by way of cell phone or other means that we have to track, if you're friends or, or acquaintance with Mr. Ebron and you had some contact with him, we wanna to talk to you. You can remain anonymous. You can call 630-0500 or the uh, Crime Stoppers at 1-866-845-TIPS and remain anonymous. But we want to talk to you and want to hear from you. The, the car that was uh, reported stolen in this case, we have recovered that. We've had several tips come in that have, have sightings of this orange Honda Civic. There must be another orange Honda Civic out there because we have the one that we're looking for in our custody. It was recovered within about 30 minutes of it reportedly being stolen. And again, we know that wasn't the case from it. Tomorrow, our efforts will continue, like I said, in that South uh, Phillips Highway area or in areas that we learn information from. I can take a few questions if anybody How has them. How frustrating is this after almost two days? It's frustrating to the point that I have somebody that knows what happened to Lonzi and the cooperation level hasn't been enough 
to have us either recover that child alive or recover that child's body. Uh, the victim's family in this case deserves answers. The community deserves answers. One person who has that key to us hasn't provided that to us. Dan, that's very frustrating. Why do you feel he's not cooperating? Because I don't have Lonzi recovered, either alive or dead. Had he cooperated with us to the point that it that we needed, we wouldn't be standing here talking today, and we'd either be working a recovery case or a murder investigation. That's not happening. I'm not receiving the cooperation I need. Well, last time you talked to us, you said that Ebron had kind of stopped giving you helpful information. Did he give you any information today to help? Uh, he, he, he came with us today and kind of worked the same way he had, uh, which wasn't which was somewhat helpful, but not helpful enough. Um, he has the answers in this case, we feel, uh, and I want that from him. I need that from him. Or somebody he may have talked to with him. You know, he has been in jail uh, all day. He had his first appearance this afternoon. Uh, we continue to, where we can, make contact with him. We hope that he, through his family members or friends who may contact him, uh, through jail visitations or phone calls that he makes, Encourage him to do the right thing. Encourage him to step forward and let us know the location of this child. He knows what that location is. Do the right thing. Step up there and let us know. Give answers to the family. Let us find Lonzi, hopefully alive, but but if not, Lonzi deserves to be back with his family in whatever shape he is. Are you guys still considering this arrest commission? Thing? The more minutes that tick by, the less chance this is of a rescue mission. Uh, as we continue along this, we're, we're, we're hopeful, but but we're also aware of what it could be. Can you talk about what led to this specific location? Was it a tip of the car being spotted there? No, again, the car, we've had the car recovered and asked this morning for, for some information about the car. Uh, we learned from uh, from some, some checks that uh, Mr. Eberron had lived in the, in the trailer park in question in the past. And we have some other uh, other data that came in, other other leads that we had that came in that kind of led us down there, and that seemed the most logical thing to do. Again, this is information driven. This is logic driven. Uh, when we had that information come in, that's what wrote us down there. Uh, I'd heard some of the uh, some of the public comment today that they didn't see the same level of police activity here in Briarwood that, that they maybe saw yesterday, and that is again because this is information driven. Our goal is to recover this child, and if I think based on what we have that that child is, is down there that's where police efforts will, will move we haven't moved completely from the briarwood area and we still will remain uh in the apartment complex we just occurred and in the neighborhood where where the car was recovered but again i, I want to be where we need to be and that's what we'll do chief i have a two-part question one at baker skinner park they're having a prayer vigil right now is that going to interfere with any search efforts over there and two there have been increasing search efforts over at baker skinner park is there a specific reason why they're looking in the words woods over there again uh the prayer vigil uh, that's one of the things that that anybody that that believes can do what i have done i i have prayed for a successful resolution of this the folks that are gathering over there are doing just that that's awesome that's not going to stand in our way at all uh, again, information driven. We had some information that led us over there. Uh, we were looking into a potential piece of evidence that was going to be recovered over there. That's what they're doing now. Was it that, recovered? It, it has it either is being recovered now or has been recovered. And again, that's what we'll continue to do. As tips or information come in, we'll be reactive to that. How invaluable How resources are the community members that are out helping you search? It, it is extremely uh, invaluable. And, and I've had so many wonderful people come forward and, and be wanting to volunteer their time and their efforts. At this point in time now, it, it, it wouldn't provide a whole lot of effort. If I had a location that I felt like the, the public's effort to, to search would be helpful, we, we, we'd certainly reach out there to the public. There's some logistical issues that are coming with, with, with a certain volunteer effort, which we would be able to manage. But at this point in time, it's not to that level. And uh, But the, the thoughts and the prayers that we've received are, are certainly touch my heart and, and those are who are here to, to Dan's point of how frustrating it is. It is nice to see the community support that we've received. Are you guys still searching tonight or, or is the search over and continue tomorrow? We haven't stopped the search since we've, we've been out. We have a group. It's a little bit of a scaled back group from what we've had during the daylight. Uh, daylight hours are when we're gonna find what we need to find. It's much harder to search at nighttime, obviously, uh, but those efforts have been scaled back. Uh, officers will remain in these areas that we're, we're looking at today and in the Briarwood neighborhood throughout the night. Uh, contingency of detectives and officers in this area ready to to move to information that we have and continue to search in the case that that something's out there. Are Can you, you guys, explain will on you the still be searching the, the shopping center by the Avenue Mall off of, off of 295 and Avenue Mall? We'll, we'll have a presence there, but again, to search in the night 
I, I want fruitful results. I don't think I'm going to get those fruitful results without daylight. Can you expand at all on the evidence or the uh, reasoning why you are now labeling everyone as a suspect? Well, the, the facts that came together that led us to believe that what he told us was a lie, uh, the, whole, the whole stranger abduction hinged on the fact that he made this report about a stranger taking his car with the child in the car. We had both evidence and conversations with Debron that changed our view of that. When I changed the view of that, that takes away the stranger aspect of this and points all fingers at Mr. Ebron. Um, that's basically that's basically what. So, do you believe the child to be in this area with someone that Ebron knows? I, I can't rule that out as 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 a potential, but again, there's more questions than there are answers in this case, and I don't know what happened to Lonzi. If Mr. Ebron would cooperate a little bit more we would be able to uh, to have more of a successful resolution to this and have some answers to the family. So as things go on, if there is breaking news throughout the night, I will send the media information out and step back out and give that to you. Uh, short of that, around 8.30 in the morning, I can update you on uh, tonight's efforts and then uh, with other information. So thank you for continuing to uh, have this forward. One more question, Mr. Hackett. Sure. Which location did you bring Evron to today? Uh, we rode him at several different locations throughout the city. So he, he may have been out here, he may have been south. Um, again, that's that's about as as cooperative as he's been. Was he directing you to those locations or were you picking where to take him? A little bit of both. So, all right, thank you all very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.